Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday morning, November 9th on Tropical Storm Nicole. Again, on the phone today, I'm traveling for work. Apologies for the shaky video. Uh, here's Nicole at the sunrise satellite picture here, spinning away to the east of Great Abaco. It will pass close to Grand Bahama as well on its way toward the east coast of Florida, still generally on track for a landfall, generally along the central portion of the eastern Florida coastline, somewhere between West Palm Beach and the Space Coast, and uh, has been pretty well behaved as far as the track goes over the past 24 hours, tracking fairly close to the NHC forecast. We have seen some further organization of Nicole since yesterday. You'll see a concentrated area of compact thunderstorm activity near the center of the circulation now. This is starting to acquire a more organized look than it had a day or two ago. If we look at the recon data, we will see some elevated winds here. This is The plane is flying at 10,000 feet, so it's not surface wind being shown here, but the mid-level wind maximized on the north side of the center as we might expect, and within a small distance of the center. So it's a compact inner core structure beginning to form. Now, you'll note the pressure here is 986 to 987 millibars. Uh, that is lower than yesterday. However, over the last 6 to 12 hours, it hasn't come down very much. It dipped into the mid-980s yesterday afternoon and hasn't really fallen further. And this is evidence of some impacts that are starting to limit Nicole and how strong it can get. And if I go back to the larger satellite view here, you might notice on the north side of the storm, remember we have a big pressure gradient between strong high pressure over the eastern U.S. and Nicole itself. This is causing a large surge of northeasterly flow to the north of Nicole, and that's going to contribute to a large area of impacts to land areas. But what it also means is we have kind of a stable air mass here. The, the ultimate origin of this air mass was more polar in nature, and so there is a strong inversion underneath this cloud debris. And you might notice, especially before the sunrise during the infrared portion of the loop, there's a deck of white gray stratus underneath all of the upper level cloud debris. You can't see the ocean under here. It's just a solid deck of cloud. That tells you there's an inversion here, and you can see it in model-derived soundings. I think I actually pulled one up for you. Here's one from the GFS. This is a vertical profile showing how temperature decreases with height until you get to about 850 millibars at the top of the boundary layer and there's an inversion there, that little kink, and you see the green line take off to the left, that's the dew point. So it gets really dry when the red and green line are separated here versus a moist boundary layer. This is a pretty stable air mass, not a lot of cape here, not a lot of instability, and if you look at that, it's getting pretty close to the circulation. Uh, the stratus deck encroaches all the way down toward the northern Bahamas. So this stable air is starting to get potentially wrapped in a little bit. And this is in combination with the dry air that was already existing in the southern semicircle of Nicole due to the old upper level trough, which started to disintegrate toward the south of the system. And upper level troughs typically have mid-level dry air associated with them. And that dry air has remained here lurking on the south side, getting ingested into Nicole's inner core in spits and spurts. And if you look at the close up a satellite loop at sunrise here, just to give you a really good view, if you take a close look at this thunderstorm activity, it's still confined mostly to the northwestern quadrant, wrapping maybe just around the northeastern quadrant and down toward the due west part of the circulation. But those textured cauliflower tops not wrapping all the way around the southern and southeastern side yet. So this indicates it's not a completely closed inner core. We're not seeing a fully formed eye wall that you might expect in a developing hurricane just yet. Now the organization has improved. We're seeing a much more compact nature and curvature to this convection. So the trend is toward a stronger storm. But again, it's not necessarily a rapid trend at the moment. And it does seem like some dry air ingestion is periodically disrupting the formation process of this inner core, which would be good news, hopefully holding Nicole under a ceiling as it deals with this dry and stable air on all sides may prevent it from, you know, really going to town during this final stretch as it moves uh, toward the northern Bahamas and eastern Florida, hopefully limiting the maximum winds that we see. But they are between about 60 and 70 miles per hour now, and hurricane threshold is 74. So we're getting close to Cat 1 hurricane intensity, and wind impacts will certainly be felt, especially on the northern side of this compact area of thunderstorm activity that you see here. This is where the very strongest winds are going to be at the time of landfall. But again, because of the strong high pressure to the north, there's really a very large field 
of winds greater than 30 or 40 miles per hour on the north side that is very expansive relative to your typical tropical storm. So we are going to see expansive areas of coastal flooding potential, gusty winds and power outages that could occur in association with Nicole, but the very worst conditions are going to be within this convective ball that you see here in terms of raw wind and storm surge power. Speaking of impacts, this is the official forecast, 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday from the National Hurricane Center. Hurricane warning out for the northern Bahamas here, and you can see again this general westward track bringing it in uh, just north of West Palm, and this has again been kind of oscillating back and forth uh, between the Space Coast and West Palm Beach, but pretty consistent here on a general landfall in this area. You can see the hurricane warning in red in Florida from Boca Raton to Daytona Beach, and tropical storm war warnings are much more expansive than that from South Florida all the way up through Georgia, South Carolina, where the wind is coming parallel to the coast or onshore, could be quite strong over a large area. And you see the west coast of Florida as well. And we talked about yesterday the potential for Nicole to reemerge over Apalachee Bay or the Big Bend area of Florida, the northeastern Gulf of Mexico, just for a brief time. Probably not long enough to allow any appreciable re strengthening. However, models have shown that a compact wind field could still be intact when it emerges perhaps briefly over the water again. And so we're watching carefully the details of this track in here, because in terms of storm surge potential, it's worse for the Big Bend area if the storm is farther out over water because it allows for southwesterly flow onshore to push water into the Big Bend area and Apalachee Bay. So the farther offshore it comes in the Gulf, uh, the worse the, the surge could potentially be, but an onshore track uh, just inland would be better for surge potential. Not, it wouldn't reduce it to zero, but you'd still, you'd have less surge than if the storm came back out over water again. The other thing we'll be concerned about here is the potential for widespread wind impacts and power outages over northern Florida and Georgia. Lots of trees here, lots of uh, wind prone areas uh, where power outages occur easily, and that could occur in areas like Tallahassee and uh, the rest of northern Florida and south Georgia there. Here's a look at the interactive map of NHC's impact. Uh, this is the storm surge uh, coloring along the coastline, showing a storm surge warning from South Florida all the way up past Jacksonville, the St. Johns River area, and then up to Savannah, Georgia, storm surge watch from uh, Savannah all the way up past Charleston in South Carolina. So you can see again a large area where that onshore flow is pushing water. And the reason why is this green area uh, is all tropical storm force 39 miles per hour or greater, all in this green area, pushing that water toward the shore. So that's why we see this huge area well north of the forecast cone, which is in blue. Again, the cone tells you where the center is going. It doesn't tell you where the impacts are going. The impacts extend well outside that cone, and you can see storm surge watches also from Apalachee Cola eastward past Cedar Key uh, along the coast of the Big Bend on the Gulf side of Florida. So we can't forget about impacts here, especially if the track comes a little bit offshore there for just a brief time. We're also talking about fresh water flooding being a possibility. Again, this is not a huge rainfall event expectation, but there is a slight chance of flash flooding inland, especially in flood prone areas in yellow here across much of the Florida Peninsula, portions of the Florida Panhandle, and then even well up across most of the eastern U.S. here as uh, Nicole will be turning toward the northeast. And one thing to note is that Nicole will be tracking up through North Carolina, Virginia, and most of the rain will shift to the northwest of the center. This is typical of storms that are recurving and becoming non-tropical in nature. Typically, the rain axis ends up northwest of the track. So that's why you see a lot of this flash flooding potential way off to the northwest here in places like West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and uh, upstate New York. And so there will be potential for flash flooding. And remember, flooding is such a local kind of impact, and it really depends on the exact details of the terrain and how the water flows when it falls and how rain bands set up, which can cause unexpected amounts that are locally much higher than the forecast. So just be prepared and have a plan if you're in a flood prone area uh, anywhere here in Florida over the next couple of days. We're expecting, uh, you know, the track to, to move into North Florida and Georgia sometime on Thursday night and Friday if I bring that forecast back up. 
yeah, overnight Thursday in northern Florida, and then it will accelerate toward the northeast. So we're talking about during the day Friday and Friday night and Saturday is when we get most of the impacts further north up into the mid-Atlantic and New England areas. Uh, and by the time we clear the weekend, the storm will hopefully be clearing out and we'll be done with it. But uh, an interesting, uh, unusual track out of the east toward Florida for November. We really don't typically see this, uh, but hurricane season is in effect until the end of November. And so this can happen. Hopefully everyone has a plan ready to go and is prepared. Everyone, please stay safe as we continue watching Nicole. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.